It's finally here. After months of work, countless late nights, and a few unexpected detours, the TI-9922 is finished. Today we're giving it its final polish, firing it up, and putting it in the head-to-head -head with the original TI-99 4A. Welcome back to Erie's 8-Bit Workshop. If you followed this build from the start, you've seen the TI-9922 come to life piece by piece from a blank PCB and a tangle of wires to a bored running TI Basic. We've fought through counterfeit chips, a batch of bad capacitors, and even learned the simplest passive component can ruin your day if you don't test them first. But then that's the charm of retro builds. They teach you patience. I've produced a power supply box designer in OpenSCAD. You can specify the size of the box, and how big you want the cable holes and switch holes to be. I've used it to create this monster in which I have placed the triple voltage mean well power supply. While I've used PLA to print the computer case, I've used nylon to print the PSU case. Although I'm not expecting it to get very hot, PLA can warp over time, even on a gentle heat, so using nylon should mitigate this. I've also used a 4-pin XLR plug and socket to allow the power supply to be removed from the computer. The OpenSCAD and STL files for both the case and the power supply are on my GitHub repo. The 3D printed case is finally complete, each quarter taking almost 60 hours to print, the top finished in that classic TI silver and the bottom in black, a proper throwback to the 994A's timeless look. The case pattern is on Dan Werner's GitHub page. He designed it to be sent to a commercial service for resin printing but I've modified the design to cut the top and bottom into two sections each. That way I can print a quarter of the case at a time on my 3D printer. I have a Snapmaker Pro which is, has quite a large print area. It is not quite large enough to print the entire top or bottom in one go, but cutting it in half allows me to print the case. As well as cutting the case in half, I've put additional sections on, which can be used to glue the halves together. The finished result looks quite good, I think. Unfortunately, I've made a small error with these tabs and it interferes with one of the standoffs. I'll have to cut it off manually. Now let's bring everything together. The PCB drops perfectly onto the standoffs. All the ports lined up and there's just enough clearance for the keyboard ribbon. I'm securing everything with M3 screws, snug but not tight. To make sure it is secure, I'm using brass screw inserts. You install them with a soldering iron. It melts the plastic and is held firm when the plastic resets. You want a solid contact without stressing the board. As well as the screw, I'm using a nylon washer. That way I don't scratch the board. Next, the keyboard. I've used 20cm DuPont cables for the keyboard. 
they'll need an extension. 30 centimeters would have been better. We need to cut a hole in the case for the Pico 9918 VGA socket. The XLR connector is slightly larger than the hole on the back of the case. We'll need to enlarge it. And there it is, the board installed. Looks good, doesn't it? Let's give it its final identity. I got the keyboard legend. I've also got the function, control, and enter colored dots to apply. and these clear stickers with the Texas Instrument logo, the TI-9922 computer label. They really make it look like the TI-9942 did. and underneath the finishing touches. Rubber feet to stop it skidding on the desk. And a serial number sticker. Number eight, quite fitting for Erie's 8-bit workshop, I thought. Here we go, first power up inside its finished case, and there it is, the iconic blue TI Basic screen, still one of the best sights in retro computing. Perfect, everything's working as it should. Let's take this one step further. How does this modern remake perform against the TI-99 4A? Well, I've set up both systems running the same short TI Basic benchmark, nothing fancy, just a loop doing some maths and string operations. It's simple, but a good way to compare executing speed. The TI-9922 isn't dramatically faster. BASIC still runs under the same interpreted model as it's written in GPL, but it's rock solid. The video output is cleaner and it boots faster thanks to the modern GROM emulation. It's less about speed really and more about reliability. 
modern components keeping the vintage design alive. I had wanted to test out using a cartridge or two, but I've got three problems. Firstly, the TR9922 is built on a design similar to the quality improved version of the beige TR9994As. This means that the final Grom 99 cartridge won't work. Unfortunately, that's the only one I've got. Secondly, perhaps more importantly, it doesn't fit. The IC socket with the IC on top prevents the cartridge from sitting in correctly in its socket. We obviously need some kind of extender for the cartridge socket. Lastly, there's no slot for the cartridge on the TI-9922 case. We'll have to cut one in when we eventually fix that problem. But for the moment, let's just enjoy the sleek look. Look at that. Sleek, compact, unmistakably TI. And that's it. The TI-9922 build is officially complete. This project has been a real journey. We've learned to double check every part, not just the chips, but also the capacitors and resistors too. We've dealt with counterfeit ICs, misbehaving signals, and a few surprises along the way that remind me why these machines are so special. I wanted to give a huge thank you to everyone who's followed the series, left comments, and offered encouragement. And an especially big thank you to the folks over at the Atari Age Forum. Your advice, tips, and even the loan of test gear made this possible. And of course, a massive thank you to Dan Werner for creating the TI-9922 project. It's an amazing way to experience the 994A in a modern build-it-yourself form. So what should I build next? Should I go down the Acorn Atom route or maybe tackle a Commodore 64 clone? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps to keep this channel going and lets me keep building more of these retro machines. This has been Eerie's 8-Bit Workshop. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next build. Goodbye.